This is the code we wrote in some previous video tutorial. Let's go through it once. So this is the code to check for the number of input from the user. This is where we get connected to test network. And here we check for the validity of the R address input by the user. And here we use the client object and then send account info command to the test network to fetch the account detail that is account information of the R address entered by the user from command line. We also have strict is equal to true which means account info returns result only if it's passed with valid R address. Here we check if it's valid R address or not. And in case there is an error, the execution stops here. And if everything is fine, the result will be displayed. So let's execute it once. So I will fetch the valid R address which is active on the XRP ledger. You can just grab this R address which is not, which is valid but not active on XRP ledger and pass it to the script. Also pass the mnemonic, also pass this family seed, etc. I'm passing the valid information here. And let's see if it outputs the right result. And it does. Now let's modify the same script and accept secret that is family seed from the user and then check for the validity of the family seed entered by the user and then sign a payment transaction. Just sign it. We won't be submitting it to the network yet. I'll just show how to sign it locally without connecting to the network. So let's modify the script. Now there is another helper method called is valid seed to check if the user entered that is if the past family seed is valid or not. Now let me change this message. If it's invalid family seed, it should say invalid family seed and halt the process. Now let's fetch the account information of the R address, but user is passing secret and not the R address, right? But we already know how to derive the R address from the secret. So let's do that. I'll declare a constant called account and by using a method called derive, we will derive the account information that is the R address from the family seed. So user passes the family seed as third argument which is here. First argument is the command node. Second argument is the file name. And the third argument is family seed 0, 1 and 2. Okay. So let's output the information present inside this constant account first. So we are looking for our address information from this. Look, we are passing our address here, which is wrong. We need to pass family seed and it rightly points it out. So let me copy the family seed here and then pass it. So it outputs, that is it derives the accounts information, which includes our address. So let me uncomment this snippet of code wherein we fetch the account information of the R address. So let me remove this. Now we are connecting to the test network and trying to fetch the account information of the R address. So R address is present inside account with the field address. Let's output the information present inside this constant data. Let me remove this. This output will confuse the rest of the output. So it's better to remove it. So this should fetch the account information of the R address corresponding to this family seed. So the output has a couple of important fields. The first one being the balance. If the user is trying to send the number of XRP greater than the balance, you can just warn the person. This balance also includes base reserve, by the way. 
The second important field is sequence number. Remember, if and when the transaction gets included in the final ledger, the sequence number increments by one. This is implemented in XRP ledger to avoid double spending problem. And this output also includes the current ledger index, which is important and we will see how to use it in next video probably. Now using some of the account information we just fetched, let's sign a payment transaction. Remember we fetched the account information from the ledger. So we need to, we had to connect to the test network here. The signing takes place locally. So let's see how we can do that. We will be using a method called sign, which is present inside the helper library, which is XRPL account lib. Remember the signing happens locally. We will not use this client method to sign the payment transaction. Hence signing takes place locally. So this sign method takes two parameters. The first one is the payload. The second one is the account information, which also includes public and private key information. So we will pass this constant as second argument. So now coming to the first argument, there is a field called transaction type. And the one we are going to look at now is payments transaction type. Remember, we need to write it as is. You should not write small letter P or small letter that is lowercase t or anything like that. All these are case sensitive. Now the account from which we want to send the transaction, that is our R address, which is present inside account dot address field. And destination account, that is to which address, to which R address we want to send the payment. I have a active R address. Let me copy that and paste it here. Now the important field, which is amount. If you are transferring XRP, make sure you specify it in drops and as string. So this is one XRP, there is 1 million drops. We need to count the number of zeros here. If you enter one zero extra by mistake, you will send 10 XRP instead of one XRP. So why don't we just make use of ES6 feature to specify the number and then convert it to string using string method. That way we can specifically see the number of zeros using underscore. Okay. Moving on to next important field, which is sequence number. We have to specify it or else the transaction will fail. So the, the sequence information is present inside the constant data inside field account data and then sequence. So remember, this is just the signature. We are just deriving the signature and we are not submitting it to the network. So even if you generate multiple signatures, it will use the same sequence number and only one transaction will get included in the final ledger. Now fees is usually 10 to 12 drops and it should be specified like this. If developers mistakenly enter some zeros, Sometimes they end up paying 12 XRP. Luckily, Ripple D has maximum limit for fees, which is 12 XRP. So you can't mistakenly send 12 million XRP as transaction fees. But note that this is how you specify the fees in XRP ledger. Now let's output what's present inside this sign data constant. Uh, let me also remove or just comment this line of code. Okay, so let's execute it. So couple of things to observe here. We have a signers field here. It's an array by the way, which means multiple people can sign this transaction, but this is single account signing. It's not multi signing. So only one person was responsible to sign this payload. Now ID, ID is important. Uh, I'll come to that. Signed transaction. This is what we will be submitting to the network. Okay. We signed this transaction locally, but we will be submitting this signed transaction to the network, which outputs an ID, which should match this ID. That is how we know which request invoked, which response. 
TXJSON has our payload information that is transaction type is payment, the account information which is our R address, you can just cross check it. So the R address corresponding to the family seed we entered and then the destination address and the amount. See it just got converted to proper string format. So that's all. The two very important fields here is the ID field and the signature that is signed transaction. So ID is important because we need to check it against the output which we receive from the RippleD server. So let's just fetch these two fields and output to the console. So this is how we sign a payload. So we can obtain the signature offline like this and then submit it to any network. That way your private key remains safe locally. Okay. Okay. So in next video tutorial, we shall see how we can submit this signed transaction to RippleD that is test network using the client object and look for a response which has this ID. That's how we know which request invoked which response. So we will just be using this client object and send method and we'll be using the command submit. We'll show that in the next video. So remember this, the signing always should happen locally and then the signature should be sent to the network using submit method. Now let's get to the interesting part which is assignment. This script as of now is only accepting family seed. What if somebody enters mnemonics? Just try that. We have a mnemonic here as secret. What happens if user passes that? It just outputs as invalid family seed because this helper method validates the secret entered by the user. Now make sure even mnemonic works. That is user can enter both family seed as well as mnemonic and then validate the user input and then derive the account information using the derive method appropriate to the user input and also check if the account is in fact active on XRP ledger. This account is not active on XRP ledger so it throws error because it doesn't have sequence information as it's not even active on XRP ledger. So this gets validated because it's a valid seed. It also derives the account because it's a valid account, but it's not present. That is if it's not active on XRP ledger. So this throws error. Okay, because it's not, its information is not available on XRP ledger. So when we try to fetch sequence number from account data, it starts throwing error. So fix that. Also check if the user is trying to send more XRP than the available balance and also get the user input that is destination address from the user from the command line. So make these changes and in the next video I'll make these changes and let's compare our code and improve our skills.